Okay, so I'm going to show you what I would do with this. Um, it's an awesome sunset that I'm super jealous of. Okay, so you take the, go into the crop tool and I take the ruler and straighten the horizon a little bit. It's not too far off. It kind of has like a little bit of an illusion that it's a crooked just because of how this shore comes up and that it's just kind of an illusion. It's <clears throat> anyway, it's straight, so we're good. Um, so when, when you have the sun in like your frame, you're always going to have some parts of it that look like burned out, I mean blown out. So I can fix that in Photoshop once I export. But that just so you're aware, that's kind of what we're dealing with, like spot right there. We want it to not be totally white. Um, so this is super contrasty, and the shadows are really dark. So I'm gonna use the slider to. Oh wow. Okay. So I didn't know. The golf course was actually there. You know, wait. How I would have shot this um, is bracket. So on the side of your camera, if you hit the bracket tool and then use the back dial, you can have it do a plus one, minus one exposure along with your normal exposure. And what you end up with is some lighter exposures and some darker exposures. That you can stack together and blend together so that you have like if this um let's see what happens if I did this. Huh. We might actually be able to salvage this now that I'm really seeing it like this. <coughs> the only problem now is this lens flare right here. Um, but we can fix that, I think. Okay, so let's try. That's pretty, pretty good. Okay, so this complicates things, but this is what I would do, kind of, I'm just going to quickly, as quickly as possible, show you what I would do with this. Okay. Um, so first I'm going to export this one where we have a nice plus 3.35 exposure where we can see the green golf course. My computer's dragging right now. And then um, I actually like this plus 1.8 for most of the sky here. <clears throat> and when I export the second one, I'm clicking use unique names so that we have now both versions opened as separate files. So there's this one that we start with and then this is the middle one that we like the sky and then yeah so there's no really recovering that blown out area from where the sun was um, so I'm just gonna leave it at that I think let me see help me out do I need another one I'll do one normal exposure and I'm going to bring up the shadows and the blacks and this is, I'm just going to take what I can from this, this part of the image. Just these little details might help matters when I'm trying to um, blend this back in. Export. Use unique names. So now I have three of these puppies. Yeah, 
This is actually a really complicated edit that we're kind of getting into here. Um, okay, so what I am now doing is I am stacking them together. I'm lining them up. So there's the, that one, and I'm closing this one because I have this have it open here, and then this one I'm dragging and dropping. So now I have all three versions of it. See, here's a, the lightest one, the middle one, and then this is the darkest one. And what we're going to use now is the layer mask tools tool to kind of blend them together. So um, the background is the lightest one. That's where we want the golf course part. And then this one, I want to take the sky most of the sky from here. So I'm going to add a layer mask and hide all. And then I'm going to take the eraser tool and I'm going to erase where I want that layer showing. And I actually have my opacity showing 100% here. And I get a And now this one, I'm just going to take from this area here, layer mask, hide all again, and I just want this part, so I'll just put the eraser tool right there. Um, okay, so the next thing I would do, color balance. Shadows, a little blue, magenta. Oh, this, and this is going to be hard to tackle this uh, blend spray. That's the other problem with uh, having the sun in your frame. Um, where am I? Let me adjust my, my color balance layer. And then I'm Midtones, a little warmness here. And this is just kind of eyeballing it, what looks good to you. And a lot of times, what looks good in the sky is different than what looks good down here, so we can kind of use the layer mask to um, kind of paint where we want it to go. So if you look on the palette over here, my computer is like wigging out right now. Um, I did a 61 opacity brush on the golf course and that's covering 61% of this color balance adjustment from this golf course. Um, the next thing I would do is more color balance and then I'm moving on midtones. In the sky what I want to do is first um, Enhance the blues. Blue, magenta. I'm trying to get this sky color up here to be a little cooler. And then paint bucket. And eraser tool. See, this is like all like a vision that you just have to get. Because I'm trying to explain my thought process here, and it's not even, I mean, all it is, is what I think looks good. And, I mean, it, it, here's another one for highlights. This is, I like doing this on sunsets. It enhances quite a bit. 
Um, you just have to be kind of subtle with it. Okay, so this is like a lot that I just added, right? And I don't want all of it like that. So I'm going to do a paint bucket. I did all by paint bucketing that and then eraser. And I'm just going to kind of. My computer, like when I do a big paintbrush on a big file, it, it's slowing down. I just need to restart right now. So annoying. Okay. And then, so I, I'm liking the sky. Um, for the golf course, I would kind of. Not sure what I would do here. Like you want it to still be green but also like like a love like a rich green but at the same time you don't want it to be like why isn't that sunset affecting the color of the golf course? I don't know. I'm just kinda of fiddling with it at this point. See what So like a little bit of cyan blue. Hmm. Hmm. I kind of like it before. Maybe if I do like half or something, yeah. And then. Highlights again. This is tough to like just say, like explain why I'm doing this stuff. This is just kind of like, hmm, this looks good, this looks good. One thing that I'm just going to try, so I'm doing a levels adjustment, this like kind of lowers the contrast a little, little when you, it lightens and maintains your black and white points. Um, so you can lighten things without like losing detail anywhere. Oh my gosh, this is going to be the longest video ever. I'm so sorry. Um, so I'm kind of just filling in some of the shadowy parts and softening the edges of this blown out area. Okay. And I can take my brush and kind of Come back in here a little bit. Just going back and forth and seeing what looks good. Okay. And if you look here, like this is all like crazy, like a crazy person's orange spot. But it's just.
And if you look at the before, it's quite a bit of difference there. Um, okay, so at this point, I'm adding a blank layer, and I'm going to use the eyedropper tool, and I'm going to select this yellow that's close to this blown out area. I'm going to use a paintbrush, and I'm going to paint this area, and then I choose multiply over here. And that makes it so it's not white anymore. Um, and if the edges are kind of darker, like I can extend this out just so it looks like it's meant to be there. So right here, I'd like this to kind of fade to pink a little bit. And I'm going to take this pink and paint it. <laughs> and then just kind of feather it a little bit with the eraser. Right from here, and okay. It was Command Option Shift E to create a flattened copy of all these layers. I do that just in case. I find something that I made a mistake on and I want to go back afterwards. Um, you could also just flatten it and then if you've noticed something you just would have to start over. Okay so for this um, lens flare situation I basically try color balance here. Take reds out, greens in, and see how that looks. Let's see. The problem is you still it's still like a spot. I'm going to play around with this and figure out what I'm going to do next and then I'm going to record a second video.